Welcome back to Rustaholic. I'm Patrick, and we're trying to finish this 69 Fury here. We are less than a week from Daytona, so we got to put everything back together, and hopefully we can actually make it there. So that's the goal. We're going to jump right into it. We're going to try to get this inner fender on, the actual fender, the front grille, these types of things, and uh, hopefully that'll go smooth. Let's see what we can do. This is awkward. But not too bad so far. I'm just hoping when all this stuff gets back together, you get all the things layered right, you know? I've definitely had to do this more than once because I didn't get the layer right. So let's see. Inner fender wells on. I'm going to attempt the fender. not right but I need to somehow hook this back up so I need it to sit here in a way while I do that all right here's the plan I've got this wire ran through the fender, out the bottom, and taped to it. The theory is, I'm gonna pull this wire and pull it up through here, and all I gotta do is be able to get a nut on it. Then take uh, the wire off, and we should be good to go. I just can't get my hand in there and support this fender at the same time. So, let's do it. All right, we need a new plan. That only half worked. Apparently, I can't get to the threads. Figured it out. Check it. This is gonna work. All right, we've done a little bit more since uh, last you saw. My friend Cody is uh, coming to town. He's gonna help us finish this up. And that's what we're trying to do. We only got a couple days to go. We got the fender back on, inner fender wells on, 
and we got the uh, the lower, it's not a valance, but the brace is on. Uh, and we're just going to continue on until uh, we can get the hood on this thing and uh, get ready to go to Daytona. Because uh, whether we make it or not is yet to be seen. But, <laughs> yeah. but we're going to try. It's going to be fun. So, alright. Keep going. Grills on. Hood is next. All right, installing the hood, take 25. Here we go. <laughs> Ready? Go. Oh, that guy wanted to come with us. Oh. Not feel good. Huh. Here, can you hold it and I'll come up. I got it. You got it? There to start. Oh yeah. I love breaking the sun. He was like, you know, you're not supposed to be using. Hey, it's uh, it works. You ain't wrong. It works. Fuck well, you. <laughs> I think I'm gonna definitely get some extensions. Be nice. Maybe like four or five more hairs. Could be nice. All right, it's another day, but look, we did get the, the hood on, so the front end is almost all on, which is great, except after all of that, we've got two issues. One, I don't think I did the order right. I'm pretty sure before I did all of this down here and tightened everything up, I should have just put the fender on, put the hood on, and set it down and got it all lined up before locking everything down. Because uh, now at this point, we got some gaps, and I'll show you that in a second. The other issue that we have is that, uh, well, we got a new intake, we got a new spacer, <laughs> and I tried to do the original uh, air cleaner, and that just doesn't fit. All that pluses means there's uh, much less space between the hood, and the hood won't close with it. So I'm a little sad about that. So we're going to have to do something else. Even the uh, original air cleaner that I had on there... Uh, it's too tall. Even that won't close with the hood on it. So that's an issue we're going to have to resolve. So be it. But uh, let me show you this gap real quick. Here's the driver's side gap. And that's pretty good. That's pretty much where it was when I took it apart. And since I never took anything uh, in this area off the car, I feel like I'm pretty comfortable that that is decent. Unfortunately, that doesn't look like this. So you can see it gets nice and close up there. And uh, we got some gappage there. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to try one more time. I'm going to unbolt everything in this corner and try to see if we can pull that in. So that's what's up first. Let's see if we can do it. All right. This is how I got it together. It's pretty tight, but I did loosen everything up over here, pulled it in, and then tightened it up. The gap looks okay, I think, but let's see. I'm gonna release it and see if it, uh, let's see if it stays. Whoa. Still there. Let's check the gap. I think I could live with that. I think that's all right. 
Might be time to move on to something else. What's next? What do we got to do? All right, I made it to the last thing inside the car. I've got to put uh, the glove box back together and I've got, by process of elimination, I think I've located all the bolts and know where they're gonna go. But we'll see here. This one, uh, I know it like barely fits in there, but we're gonna go for it anyway. Alright, I've got the box in. The sides and the top go behind the lip. The bottom goes on top. As you can see here. And then the next step here, if I can do this, will be something like that. I'm going to slide that in there and then uh, that'll get all bolted down. All right, almost there. Hey guys, Patrick here with a quick update. Uh, we are leaving tomorrow for Daytona, but not without some drama happening. Let's see what happened. We got the car finally running on Saturday, I think. We took it for a couple uh, test runs out there and we did find a couple issues. One, it wasn't charging. So alternator just wasn't uh, doing it anymore. You know how it is. As soon as you start putting new car new parts on the car, all the old parts are like, ooh, I want in on that. I want to be brand new. Let's and just stop working for no reason. So I uh, had to order a new one of those. Uh, got one and took two days to get it. Uh, so finally got it yesterday, uh, late yesterday, and took it out of the box. It has no padding or anything to find that it's totally junk. <laughs> it's got a broken case and the pulley itself doesn't even move at all, so total garbage. Um, had a panic, of course, because we got places to go. And uh, thanks Amazon for coming through. Ne overnighted uh, another one, and it's in the car and charging now, so we're good. However, while I'm uh, buttoning that up, I noticed that there's some leakage under the car. Like, what's going on there? And so at first, of course, I'm thinking it's, it's transmission and it's a little bit more than uh, I would like, you know. So uh, I get under there and uh, actually, you know, get my fingers in there. It's oil. It's not even transmission fluid. It's like, what? What is going on here? Jack the car up, actually get uh, under there and take a close inspection and find that uh, underneath the car, there's no oil. I mean, you can see it. I, I finally see where it's, it's coming from and it's coming up the side. Uh, of the uh, transmission, uh, up the engine block is where it's coming. So it's coming from the top of the car. 
So I'm like, all right, I like that. You know, I mean, it's not my favorite, but that's a lot better than something under the car. So drop the car back down uh, and locate that. Yeah, again, uh, I have a pool of oil near the distributor and the um, oil pressure sensor. And I'm thinking to myself, there's no way that oil pressure sensor is leaking at this point. I mean, I really sealed that up. There, I just, just couldn't believe it. So, I mean, I cleaned everything up around it, let it run for a little while. Still didn't really see anything. I'm like, maybe I don't... A lot of the GM distributors, you have this little gasket uh, underneath the uh, distributor there to put it there. And I was thinking about it, and I was like, I, I don't think I have one in this distributor. So I was like, all right, I'm going to pull it pull the distributor out and uh, there, this one has an o-ring you can see it right here uh, but it was that definitely leaking from the distributor not from the sensor so I'm like alright what am I going to do here so I, I ended up having another o-ring that was uh, just a little bit thicker than the old one so I replaced it and that might be enough um, <laughs> but I caused myself another problem and learned a valuable lesson here if you're trying to just like pull the distributor out quickly and set it aside so you can just like stick it right back in there, do not flip it upside down and store it on your bench. Don't do that. Because uh, now I have a big mess to clean up. There is a lot of oil <laughs> inside my distributor. It was like inside my cap. It was horrible. So I'm spending uh, quite a bit of time carefully trying to clean all of that out. And with any luck, We'll get it all back in the car, and we are going to uh, go to Daytona. None of this stuff so far is going to stop the train. We're, we're heading out there. So uh, anyway, that's the update. We're 20, less than 24 hours now from when the time we hit the road. And uh, very excited uh, to do that. And uh, we're getting close. So all right, maybe I'll see you in Daytona. All right, bye. All right, we're loaded up. We've done everything we can do and uh, we're heading to Daytona. Let's uh, hope we make it. I mean, we've driven it like, I don't know, 20 miles and uh, now we're gonna drive it 250. So that's probably just fine. Everything's gonna be fine with that. All right.